Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video. It's going rather dark outside. I think it's going to chuck it down. It just makes the room a lot darker, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, so what I thought I'd do is get this particular pickup video done because I want to do the collection video for it. Um, it's a system that I've never really, I think, shown off before. I mean, my collection is not a large collection by no means, but it's highly nostalgic. It's probably only about 60 games in the set, to be honest, that I got. But yeah, I mean, I mean, the Atari PAL collection is rather large. I'm not sure if it's in the 500s. Um, it's certainly not a set I want to go for in the future because there's a lot of dross in there. Even though to an Atari fan, there's probably a hell of a lot of curiosities. Um, it's probably got its fair share of rarities as well. But yeah, there's a mix of games here. Games that I used to have back in the day. Not personally, but friends would have had them. I don't think we had many Atari games ourselves. Um, but different multitude of publishers, Activision, Telegames, Telesys, all kinds of companies really. Unlike today really where everything looks quite uniform, back then it was very eclectic. Um, very vivid colours. colours. Um, but yeah, I mean some of the games that are recommended to me over the last couple of years that I've been picking up games for the Atari, that's actually very, very good. And games that I would never have picked up unless you recommended to me. Or them to me but the other thing I've done as well is go on to top 10 top 25 lists and have a look at what was there as well so I've kind of got my collection really that way so nostalgia games you recommended and games that I've seen on top 10 lists so the first game I'm going to show you is a game that I would have played first of all I remember it in the arcades but I never played it um, but I played it I think at the beginning of Ridge Racer that game is Galaxian Please tell me if it's the wrong game. I can't remember what Gallagher even looks like. It's one of them. But yeah, I mean, the thing about these Atari games as well, trying to pick them up in decent conditions really hard. It's a bit like, I suppose, if you're trying to collect for the Super Nintendo or the NES or whatever. If you look at it there, I mean, a lot of these games, unfortunately, as well, get sent in bloody jiffy bags. Because they're not valuable, people don't give a shit, do they? Let's just chuck it in a flipping jiffy bag or an envelope, even. But yeah, I mean, again... This livery was, what, 82, I think? There's a couple of games we had in our Atari when we got it. Were brand new releases. So we got our Atari quite late, really. Bearing in mind it's a machine that came out, what, in 1978? Yeah, Galaxian's one of those games, like Space Invaders. It's just the invaders peel off from a larger grouping, really, and head down towards you whilst you're trying to tackle um, the formation. But yeah, I like it. It's a good game. It is a good game. I prefer Space Invaders, personally. Yeah, it's not a bad game. Most of these games I'm going to show you originally are cheap. You're talking, if you, they were at auction, you'd be lucky to pay, be unlucky to pay more than five pound each for these games. My next one is a highly shiny game. Got well, a couple of these shiny games now. Now this particular game, again, very similar to Galaxian. But I prefer this one, to be honest. That's Demon Attack. Got a shine on there. Gotta love it, ain't you? Gotta love it. Again, it's one of those games, again, you split the big space uh, spacecrafts in two a bit later on. The problem is that when they move, their bullets move along with the ship as well, so it just makes it that bit, bit harder to play. But I do like it. Lovely cartridge. I'm going to show you all the cartridges, but there are some nice cartridges on the Atari. Again, like I said before, they're not very uniform. In fact, the stuff that Atari released was more boring than the stuff the third party released, I believe. So yeah, anything I see like obscurities as well, we'll pick up. As long as they're not ridiculously expensive. But yeah, cracking game. Would recommend that one over Galaxian. Right, what we've got next? Another shooter. This one now is in a pseudo 3D environment. Um, never played it in the arcade. It's a game originally by Sega. That's Zaxxon. Again, I'll leave some of these in the box protectors because they don't seem to come out too bad on the, on the old phone. But yeah, as you can see there, it's a bit of a strange one. Those levels are on two different heights. So you have to raise your ship up to go through that little black notch there to carry on further up. So trying to line your ship up. I'm trying to think of the game that I've got on the FM Towns that's like that. I cannot for the life of me remember. It's like Hate, I suppose, on the Amiga. On the Spectrum. I like it. It's a good game. But... Oh yeah, end of, end of level baddie. It was quite tough, quite brutal. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's again another game that I'd recommend. Quite cheap. Again, you're not going to pay much more than a fiver for that. Um, 
What have we got next? A game that I've only ever seen really in Cyber Snake J's video. We picked it up. I'm sure he said it was a good game, unless I misheard him. But I put it on, the graphics are bloody awful. But not that, it was actually good fun. Not just that, it was great fun to play as well. And that's Bump and Jump uh, by Telegames. We did publish quite a few games on the Atari. Personally, I've never played any before. It's a top-down driving game. Um, you literally just bump and jump. When you jump over the rivers and that, sometimes it's just a straight jump. Sometimes you've got to quickly react because you get two paths either side of the river. Or you end up straight in the bloody thing. And you can, can barge cars off the road as well, but it can do the same to you. So it's actually a lot better game than it looks. So I picked that one up. Just on a whim, really. Just on a whim. But yeah, very good game. I like that. It's good fun. Well, the next one isn't good fun. I think I kept it because it was part of a larger consignment of games. Uh, this game is called Oink by Activision. Um, bit of a strange one. So, yeah, you're in a pigsty, maybe. I don't know what the hell it is. I would say it's a pigsty or something like that. There's a rat eating his way through the floor. So as quick as he's eating his way through the floor, you've got to drop tiles onto the floor from above to block him in. Because he has this kind of strange pink thing that sticks out. Or is it a white thing that sticks out? i got no idea. Or his mouth. So yeah, if it actually gets you in target, it can drag you through the floorboards and kill you. It's one of those games, like a lot of Atari games, you play and you get bored within minutes. It's a bit like that. It just gets a bit more frantic. But yeah, oh, he's supposed to be blowing. Look at that. He's blowing the bricks down. Or is he a wolf? It's not a bloody rat, it's three little pigs and a big bad wolf. What a twat. Now it's a video game, so yeah, that's based on that then. I didn't know that, bloody hell, the things you learn. You're out and about. So yeah, one I wouldn't recommend, but again, cheap as chips. Now next one, I didn't realise, was a multiplayer game. Because it was kind of boring sat there playing it by myself. That's Warlords. Pretty cool game, a paddle controller game. By the looks of it, because it says so on the box. Um, it's one of those games, I think, by the looks of it, because I obviously played on my own, didn't know what I was doing. The ball never came towards me, I think it was a ball. But you've got to defend four corners. You've got four players at four corners of the game, all defending your fortress. And you have like a, a bat, similar to, say, um, Breakout, to deflect the ball. Obviously the first fault to fall uh, is a loser. So yeah, I, I like it. I like the idea of it. Like I said, I, I, can, I can't really play it on my own. So yeah, they set the Atari up properly, set the other half down, and make her play it. And she'll probably beat me as well. 1981, that one. Yeah, it's, it's a nice addition. I think I got that as well as part of the bundle. It wasn't one I would have chosen to pick up. I know it's been recommended to me by somebody. So yeah. Another great multiplayer game. Now, the only game in this bunch of games I actually remember playing back in the day um, was this one. That's boxing. But yeah, literally, that front cover pretty much tells you what the game's all about, really. Um, nothing on the back there. But again, you literally, there's a white character, a black character, and you just punch shit out of each other. That's pretty much it. So I'm not sure how you score in it. I know if you land a punch, you score, but sometimes you get a point, sometimes you get multiple points. So I'm not sure what causes that. I love punching the character on the nose because the old button nose goes in. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Again, a game you probably want to play with two players, playing it on your own is a little bit tedious. It's good, but it could be better with two players. But yeah, I remember playing that around my neighbours um, quite a bit. It was great fun. One of those games I completely forgot about, to be honest. But yeah, again, another reasonably priced game. Now, oh, what we got here? We've got a game which um, was the beginning of a particular genre. It was a game that featured the first Easter egg. I don't really know what an Easter egg is in a game, to be honest, until I read about it. Easter egg to me, you stick in your flipping mouth. But yeah, adventure. This was a bargain. I think I picked this one up for about 15 quid. Can go for considerably more. I've seen this sell for about like £70 before. Um, not my cup of tea. This game was released in 1980. It was the first arcade adventure ever made. So that's probably the reason why I picked it up to be honest. I like having games like that in the collection because it being the first of a particular genre it's always nice to see. I've got another one I think what's it called Night Driver 
It's the first game of its type in the arcade, an Atari arcade in the mid 70s. They look bloody grim, don't they? But yeah, bloody hell. An Easter egg in this, I think it's just a programmer's name, because back in the day, they would not have the programmer's name adorned anywhere in the game. Even on the box, by the looks of it. So yeah, so he had his name somewhere in a room you can find. So yeah, the first Easter egg. So yeah, a game from not for me personally, but I know some people would like this game and have fond memories of it. But yeah, not for me. That one, like I said, I think it cost me 15 quid. Our next game was recommended to me by somebody, I cannot remember who. It's a platformer, multi-screen platformer, a very colourful game with very ear-piercing music. That is Smurf. Again, Christ, I used to watch this cartoon a hell of a lot. I think most of us did back in the day. Gargamel. I remember Gargamel was like a wizard or something, any or I don't know. Yeah, love it. That is very nostalgic, not just because of the game, but because of the cartoon. But again, I love this game. Um, I played it for at least a couple of hours. It's one of those games that just it gets bigger as you play it. More screens. They do repeat themselves quite a bit. It's one particular screen you have to jump over a river. The next level up, you jump over a river and jump over something that crosses the river as well. It's all about timing. I, I absolutely love it. I've got to be honest, out of all the games that have been recommended to me, that's probably, probably one of my favourite. Again, relatively cheap, about 10 quid. Again, a lot of these games, though, you, you'll play them and you'll probably get bored really quick. Except for the two-player games, which probably got a lot more longevity, to be honest. But yeah, please have that in the collection. I'm not sure if Eddie recommended that to me. Or Roll of Core, I can't remember. All right, next up was the last game I picked up for the Atari. Uh, a game I was talking to, well, via the written word, uh, Alex Nintendo Arcade. But he just got this, given this game as a gift. But I know it's been on my list for a long time. It's just, again, finding it in reasonable condition. That's Keystone Capers. It's quite modern, so I've not even got a box protector for it. There's a platformer. Great fun, actually. You've got to chase down, it looks like a robber. I've only captured him a couple of times on a couple of levels, because it, it, again, gets frantic really quick. You've got to jump over certain objects, duck under certain objects, pick up suitcases. The thing is, though, when you go up in the lift and he sees you go up in the lift, he goes the other way. And the thing is, he can go down elevators and you can't, so it makes it bloody hard. Yeah, it's a really good game. Highly recommend it. This was about 15 quid. I think I bought it as a white now. Could have waited and got it cheaper. But I saw it, again, in nice condition. And this game was actually sent to me in a box and not a proxy jiffy bag. So please have that. But again, one of the better games on the Atari, in my opinion. Right, four left to show you. These four probably cost me around between 30 and 50 quid each. Um, Two of these games are regarded as two of the best games ever to grace the system. Uh, one of them isn't a favourite of mine, but one is. One is brilliant. First one, though, is a game I had. Well, I didn't have it. Um, again, same neighbour had it. And I, for the life of me, could not remember this game at all. And that game is called Ram It. One of the nicest bits of artwork on the Atari. It's well bloody bright, isn't it? Look at that. It's in the best condition as well of all the games I've got on the Atari. Absolutely lovely condition. I think this was about 40 45 pounds. I just had to have it though because as soon as I saw it, I thought, bloody hell, how can I forget about that game? It's flipping hard. Flipping hard game. You have to literally stop those bars touching the line in the middle. Once they touch the line in the middle, you can't move. You're, you're trapped and you run out of time and you die. So you have to cut them down the line. Shoot left and right, get rid of the bars as quickly as you can within the time in the time frame. So it's a very good game, very challenging game. But the thing about these telesys games, they've all got awesome boxes like that. I've only got the two, I think I've got this and I've got um, fast food. But yeah, cracking games. Would highly recommend that. I had this one ready out the box because once it goes back in the box, we won't come back out again. But yeah, that's Ram It. Ram It. Try and be careful here. Didn't bloody break it. I think the box is just a little bit too big for the box protector, which is a shame. What have we got next? We've got a game that I didn't realise got a PAL release. Um, I think I may have got this one from Germany. Maybe. Maybe not. It's a shame. I do need to upgrade this particular box as it's got gold or bronze lettering and it looks like it's a little bit scuffed. The game is minor. 49er. 
uh, a game that inspired Manic Miner, I believe. Again, I try and get it out of the box. It's a flipping awkward poxy flipping. Yeah, it's bloody awkward, it is. Um, yeah, again, this one was about 40, 50 quid. Um, flipping shit game, it really is. Manic Miner or Caneus any day, but it's one of those platformers that it takes an age to complete a level because it's so slow. You have to highlight the platform. So, yeah, so you walk along the platform and it fills it in. That makes sense. Got ladders, you go down chutes, and you jump over things. But everything is slow, so slow paced. It's quite boring. Another exotic cartridge. Look at that. I love it. That's what I love about this machine in particular. There's just no control. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do like having this in the collection. This is a very uh, famous game. Um, unfortunately, it's rubbish. <laughs> That's my opinion on it. You know, I mean, unless I'm doing something wrong uh, and I'm playing it incorrectly, but yeah, I found it very slow paced. But again, like I said, I, I like to upgrade it, uh, but it doesn't come up very often. I believe there are different variants on the continent as well. Not sure what the differences are, but I've seen a German variant and I've seen a British variant. Or English variant. That's the language, I guess. Yeah, this was distributed by Prism. They did a lot of distribution, didn't they, of uh, specy games back in the day. Yeah, nice to have in the collection, but yeah, grim. One of the worst games I've actually got, I think. This leads to the two uh, that are the most highly regarded on the system. Both games I'm pleased to have. One I've got a feeling I have no instructions though, unfortunately, but it's quite reasonably priced. So the first one I'll show you is um, the legendary Pitfall 2, Lost Caverns. You can probably see a nice glimpse there of some games in the reflection. But yeah, I mean, I'm really pleased to have this one because it is regarded as one of the best, if not the best, game. For me personally, I don't like it. I don't like it. That's a bit, a bit strong, but I prefer Smurf for this. It's a big game with lots of caverns, uh, and I'm not very good at it. Yeah, David Crane, a very famous programmer, wasn't he, in the Atari? Not sure what he did beyond the Atari, but yeah, I know his name. One of the, one of the sort of early stars of programming, with his name emblazoned on the front there, which clearly Atari didn't like people doing. I'm not sure if David Crane had anything to do with starting up Activision, but don't know. Activision was what? The one spin-off, was it? I think people left Atari and created their own firm. I think Activision was the first third-party firm in the world. So yeah, again, cracking game. I can't remember what this one cost me though. I'm sure it's like 40 or 50 quid for the next two. One of them hasn't got instructions. It might be this one actually. This this is one of my favourites on the Atari. Again, never had it back in the day, never played it, I believe. Yeah, this is the one that doesn't have instructions. Nice it does. It does. And that game is none other than Hero. What a game. I do love this game. Again. Goes from easy to hard really quick. Some of the levels, you turn the lights out, it goes pitch black. So yeah, it's a bit of a muscle memory game, this one. But I do love it. Roderick Hero. Hmm. But yeah, I, I do like this game. Um, again, I think I found this one via top 10, top 20 video. Probably someone recommended it to me. But yeah, it's brilliant. One that's kind of kept its value, really, because it's that desirable. Not that it's rare. It's just one of those games that people love and I'm glad I got it in the collection now because I do really appreciate it it's pretty fun I might to upgrade it though at some point because it is it's in decent condition don't get me wrong but yeah it's missing that's missing its instructions should just double check just in case so yeah I'm not gonna really pick up many more games now on the Atari um, especially before I do the pickup videos uh, the collection video um, maybe they both got I think one's just got a supplement I ain't got a flipping clue what I'm talking about. This one's got a book. Yeah, because with, with the Activision games, they're quite fancy manuals. At first glance, you probably think that's just a pamphlet. Yeah. I'm sure that's the instructions, actually. Yeah, there is. So maybe I haven't got any instructions that I'm missing. So certainly not this one. It may be Hero after all. I know one of them hasn't. It's just got a pamphlet. 
Right, let's just uh, finish this video. But yeah, I want to get the actual collection video done over the next couple of weeks. I want to take my time on it. Nothing fancy, but I want to add a bit of nostalgia to it. I mean, to give you that feel back to when you had your Atari. I mean, some people would have had their Ataris back, what, in 1970s. We certainly didn't get ours until some time later than that. Yes, yeah, so hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you can recommend any more Atari games to me, please let me know below. It's probably better doing it actually when you do when you see the old um, collection video. So you know what I got then. Yeah, so thank you for your recommendations. Some cracking games amongst that lot. Um, that's it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care and bye for now.